Hello, this is Chris Kobe with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide or listening to our podcast. We are here today to talk with candidates running in the November 8, 2022 general election. We're grateful for the support of the Carol and Velma Sailing Foundation, the League of Women Voters of Portland Education Fund, the Weiss Foundation, and our media partner, Metro East Community Media. With me is David Delp, running for the Office of United States Representatives for Oregon's 3rd Congressional District, which is generally described as in the county, virtually all of the county east of the Willamette River, except for the central east side. Welcome, Mr. Delk. Please, yeah, tell us, please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for this office. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, having this time to, to spend with you. So I was born in 1950 right here in Portland. Uh, I, have a, I had a twin brother. Uh, we were born to a single mother, which was very unusual in 1950. We grew up in poverty. Uh, I graduated from Lincoln High School and then from Portland State University uh, with a bachelor's in sociology. The last job that, that is a job with an actual employer and a paycheck uh, was with the Housing Authority of Portland. I am gay. I have a partner, we've been together for almost 30 years. Um, my uh, uh, community activities have primarily focused for the past 20 plus years. Uh, I have been a chief petitioner on almost all of the various initiatives, either Portland, county or state that will limit campaign contributions. Uh, and there'll be three more that I'll be a chief petitioner on which have been filed for the 2024 ballot. I'm a Unitarian Universalist, and I am currently chair of the Oregon Progressive Party. Why I'm running for office, I have no expectation of winning. This is a message campaign. Uh, I think that Oregonians and Portlanders uh, are tired of, of our constant engagement in war, and that we need to know how members of Congress vote on the annual war budget. Uh, either yes or no, or, and, and why they vote the way they do. Uh, war budgets are close to half the discretionary federal budget, budget, which is in excess of $800 billion. We could reach a trillion dollars in the next year or two. That's annually. When is enough enough? So it's time to move some of that war budget money to actually meet needs of real human beings. All right, let's turn to some of the issues in the campaign. Um, does the federal government have a role in addressing women's right to privacy in reproductive health decisions? And if you would, please explain your answer. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yes, uh, the federal government most definitely does, especially Congress. Congress should have acted on, on this question years ago uh, when the, when the uh, Roe versus Wade decision by the Supreme Court was first issued. Uh, obviously, when the Supreme Court makes a decision, it can reverse a decision. And of course, that's what's just happened. And rather than waiting for that to happen, the US government, the federal government, should have enacted legislation to protect a woman's right to, to a, an abortion, to, to reproductive health rights. And so, I, I will point out the U.S. House has taken the first steps already. They passed the Women's Health Protection Act, uh, 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 just about e just about an even split. Democrats all in favor, except for I think one, and uh, uh, Republicans all opposed. And it has been uh, twice brought to the Senate, and it was defeated both times. So this is a clear need for eliminating the filibuster in the Senate, which of course, as a US representative, I wouldn't have anything to do with, but we need to uh, put that in everyone's mind, advocate for eliminating the filibuster. So in addition, Congress has passed the Ensuring Access to Abortion Act. Uh, that has already passed in the Senate, same kind of split in the vote, and it needs to be uh, enacted by the Senate. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to eliminate the filibuster. 
And then they've also passed, the House has passed, the Women's Health Protection Act of 2022. That has not been uh, enacted in the Senate. Uh, again, we're going to need to eliminate the filibuster to pass it in the Senate. So I would have vote, voted yes on all three of those measures. You're listening to the Video Voter's Guide interview and podcast of David Delk, who is running for the Office of United States Representative for Oregon District 3. Let's turn to another issue here that uh, the voters will be interested in. Um, what actions, if any, should Congress take in order to ensure that economic prosperity is shared by all? Yeah, uh, Congress luckily already has a tremendous number of bills uh, before them uh, that they could vote on at any moment that would help to ensure that economic prosperity is shared by all. Uh, there are uh, about 17,000 bills that are introduced into Congress every year, or every session, I should say. Uh, but here, here are a few which have already been introduced, uh, which would uh, help us along the pathway of, of shared economic prosperity. So one of them is uh, the PRO Act, which stands for the Protect the Right to Organize. This is a very pro-labor uh, uh, bill that would help workers actually form labor unions. Uh, another one would be improve Medicare for all uh, to ensure that all people in the United States have access to Medicare. So irrespective of what their age is, uh, everybody would be covered. It would not make a difference uh, whether you, it, all you have to do is live here uh, in order to be covered. And the, and the Medicare that we're talking about would be improved over what we currently have. So, uh, so it would cover things like eyeglasses and, and uh, uh, hearing aids and, and uh, other, other stuff that, that's really needed in order to live a healthy life. So additionally, uh, we need to increase the federal minimum wage to at least $15 and it probably should in order to be equitable to everybody, it should be probably $24 an hour. I don't expect the Congress will do that right away, but I do think that Congress needs to be seriously looking at increasing the federal minimum wage and that it needs to be at least $15 an hour. Uh, Representative DeFazio has uh, introduced a bill called the Wall Street Tax Act of 2021. That needs to be that needs to be uh, uh, enacted. We also need to increase funding for the IRS to focus on enforcing laws that collect taxes from the rich. Currently, uh, the IRS focuses on the easy stuff, which is what most of us do. Uh, most of us file and the complicated returns that are uh, skirting the tax laws uh, are ignored. And so increasing the funding for the IRS will allow the IRS to get more agents to focus on these uh, loopholes in the law that allow the rich to escape taxation. Uh, we also need to pass a law like Bernie Sanders has proposed called the Tax Tax Excessive CEO Pay Act. And this is designed to close that gap between the CEO pay and the average worker pay. So the gap uh, was 42 times uh, in 1980, but it has increased to 350 to one on average uh, during the 21st century. So this needs to be uh, closed so that uh, we don't have this great disparity between uh, between income and wealth, between the very rich and the very poor, and, and, and most of the rest of us. Uh, we also need to remove the tax cap on the Social Security tax so that it becomes a progressive tax. Currently, the Social Security tax is one of the most uh, regressive taxes in America today. And we also need to change the Social Security cost of living calculator to really reflect the cost of living for senior citizens. So these were all uh, uh, close that uh, gap between uh, the rich and the poor. Uh, I, I would also say that uh, enacting two free years of college or junior college at the minimum 
would be uh, would be warranted. Senator Warren has proposed a wealth tax that needs to get enacted. Senator Warren has also proposed a surtax on corporate profits in excess of $100 million. Those are all things that would get us to that goal. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Delk. This concludes our video voters guide and podcast interview of David Delk running for the office of U.S. House of Representatives for Oregon's 3rd Congressional District. Election day is Tuesday, November 8th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and exercise your right to vote. Thank you. Thank you.